Good evening, brothers and sisters. Amen. Jesus Christ is here among us. He is ready to meet your need. Something great is going to happen tonight. Because so many of you come with great expectation to experience God's power. My Bible says, open your mouth wide. I will feel it. So God is going to feel into your heart. Bible says Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same today as 2,000 years ago in transforming our lives. Once Jesus Christ went to the Cana where the marriage ceremony was going on, then the Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, came to him. And Mary said, the wine is run out. But Jesus says, my time is not yet come. But the Mary went to the servant and said, Whatsoever Jesus commands you, obey and do it. Mary believed that Jesus Christ can perform miracle and he can supply the need of that marriage ceremony. Then, after a while, Jesus Christ commanded all the servants to fill six jars with full of the water. And Jesus said, bring the water back to the leader of the ceremony. And when the servant took the water and brought to the leader of ceremony, they found out that that water was transformed into the wine. Jesus Christ changes our lives like that. He is transformer. He transforms our lives when we receive Jesus Christ in our heart. Christ transforms our lives from sinner to the righteous person. From wretched person to the clean and holy person. Amen. From a disheartened person to the courageous person. Amen. From unhappy person to the happy person. Yes. From unfaithful person to the full of faith person. Amen. Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today and forever. Amen. Even this moment, yes. He is here yes. to transform your life. Yes. Once I was dying Buddhist, but when I accept Jesus Christ, He came into my life and transformed the li my life. Amen. I become the child of God. Yes. I was dying from terminal tuberculosis. But Jesus Christ came and transformed my dying body to a healthy body. Amen. Once I was desperate and poverty stricken, but Jesus Christ came into my life and transformed my life and he gave me an abundant life. Oh. That same Jesus is present this evening here. Yes. And he wants to transform your life. Yes. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is not philosophy, no, no ritualism, no. neither religion. No. He is the Son of God. Oh, yes. He is present here. Yes. And He is reaching out His hand. He wants to touch you and transform your life. Amen. You will feel the transforming power of the Holy Spirit yes. streaming down into your life. Yes. And you will be changed a person. Yes. Jesus Christ is a wonderful God. Devil comes to rob, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ came to give us life and life more than abundantly. Amen. He is the answer to your life's problem. You may try to solve your life's problem with your strength and wisdom, but you may fail, but Christ Jesus will never fail you. Amen. He will meet your need. He will change your life. Yes. He will change your situation and circumstances. And He will bring a great victory into your lives. Amen. Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same today as 2,000 years ago in coming down the storm. Once Jesus Christ took His disciples and stood on the shore of the Galilee. He looked beyond the Galilee. And he said, let's go over the Galilee Sea to the other part of the land. So, disciples of Jesus Christ prepared a boat for them to ride. 
and Jesus Christ and disciples all went into the boat and they set sail toward the land beyond the Sea of Galilee. But the disciples were so enthused in talking among themselves. They were self-centered. They were selfish. They were concerned about their own lives and they neglected Jesus Christ. Christ was sitting alone. Nobody talked to him. Nobody concerned about him. Nobody cared about him. So Jesus Christ just fell into sleep. Once Jesus was in fast sleep, then tremendous storm came to the Galilee. And water began to boil. And the waves began to pour into the boat. And the boat was in peril. They were going to drown. They were desperate. And disciples tried to pour out the water. They tried to steady the boat, but they failed. Finally, they were at the loss as to what to do. Then suddenly, they understood that Jesus Christ was going together with them. So they went to Jesus. He was asleep. And they shook him. Jesus, Jesus, we are drowning. Help us. Then Jesus woke up from his sleep and he stood up and he commanded the wind to stop and the waves to be calmed. Instantly the wind stopped and the wave calmed down and they were amazed. Then Jesus Christ looked at them and said, where is your faith? You know, we are like the disciple of Jesus Christ. We are traveling this life not alone. We are traveling together with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to go over this life to the yonder kingdom of heaven. And uh, we are traveling together with Jesus. We are not left alone. Jesus Christ, I will never leave you alone. Yeah. And today, the resurrected Jesus Christ is here with us together. He is within us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is not million miles away. He is here with us. But when we travel together with Jesus, we should never neglect talking to Jesus Christ. Many people put Jesus Christ into sleep. They are selfish. They become self-centered. They are only concerned about themselves. And they don't pray. They don't read Bible. They don't come to church. They don't pay the tithe. So they neglect Jesus. Then Jesus would go into a sleep. Many people put Jesus into sleep in their own lives. Many people put Jesus into sleep in their home. Many people put Jesus Christ to sleep into their business. And when Jesus Christ is asleep, then the devil is going to come and bring the storm. When master wake up in the home, the rubber can't break into the home. But when master sleep, then the Thief comes to rob, kill, and destroy. Jesus Christ is our master. When he is alive in our heart, no thief, no devil could come and rob us and destroy us. But when we put the master into sleep, then devil open our lives and come to our lives and try to destroy and kill and rob everything. So we should never put Jesus Christ into sleep. Many Christians, they put Jesus into sleep. Then when they have trouble, physically, in their family, in their business, then they wake up and they cry and they say, Jesus, how come that we are in trouble and you don't help us? But we neglected Jesus Christ, so he fell into sleep. And when we have storm in your life, we must repent of our sin. We must repent of neglecting Jesus Christ. We must repent of the prayerless life. We must neglect our devotionless life. We must uh, repent of neglecting the reading of the Bible. We must repent of neglecting of coming to church. We must uh, repent of neglecting paying the tithe. We must repent of our sins. Then we can wake up Jesus Christ. When Jesus wake up, he can command the storm to be calmed down. Amen. Things are going to happen into your life. God is going to heal you. 
Christ is going to come down the storm in your home life, in your business life. One of our members, he was a faithful Christian, but he went to America and he highly educated. And when he came back to Korea, he backslid and he did not believe in Jesus Christ. He no more attended the church, nor did he study the Bible or pray. He was uh, very proud. He was very successful in his business. So he said he could do everything with his own education, wisdom and the strength and power. Then one day he went to hospital and casually checked up his physical condition. Then doctor found out cancer in his body. And doctor said you have at most six months to live. He was just 35 years old. He was struck with great fear and desperation. He said, do I have the cancer? The doctor said, yes. And do I only have a six month? He said, at most. And he become desperate. He come back home. He began to cry. Then he began to repent of his sins. He said, oh Jesus, I've neglected you. While I was studying in America, I become proud. I push you out of my life. I become my own master. And I neglected you. But I repent. Then he went to the prayer mountain. He fasted and prayed for three days. He really repented. He cried. He shouted. He travailed. He poured out his tears. And he repented of all of his past sins. Neglecting of Jesus Christ. Of neglecting coming to church. Neglecting of paying tithe. Neglecting of the reading the Bible and pray. And for three days and three nights, when he repented, then suddenly he felt a tremendous peace come and possess his heart. He really felt the presence of Jesus Christ. And God spoke into his heart through the Holy Spirit, that by his stripes ye were healed. Amen. And the storm come down. The storm, like great cyclone, was churning his heart with fear. But the cyclone stopped. He had no fear. He had great peace and joy. And he came down from prayer mountain. He went to the hospital and asked the doctor to check over him. Doctor shook his head and said, just a few days ago we checked you and we found a great growth in your body. You were dying person. In such a few days short, we can't find any other difficult diagnosis. But he was insisting. So doctor finally took him and uh, took the x-ray picture over him. And when the picture turned out, doctor was looking at the picture and he was uh, shaking his head. And uh, this man was so scared, thinking that the doctor was going to say the final judgment. But the doctor was again shaking his head. He said, just a few days ago, we found the terrible cancerous growth in your body. But now, according to this picture, we don't find any cancer at all. You are completely healed. And this man was overjoyed because Jesus Christ was asleep in his life. But he woke him up by repenting his sin. And Jesus Christ calmed down the cyclone of the cancer and death. And he came to me and he really repented of abusing me. And he became a faithful Christian. He is attending church faithfully. Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today and forever. He is as same as 2000 years ago in coming down the storm in your life. What kind of storm do you like? Do you have? Do you have a storm of sin? Storm of the worldliness? Storm of demon oppression? Storm of the sickness and disease? Storm of the trouble in your business life? Who can calm down the storm? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is here with us together. He is among us. 
He is reaching out His hand. He wants to calm down your storm in your life. If ever you would come and repent of your sin and wake up Jesus, He is ready to do great miracle for you. Because Jesus Christ is not million miles away. He is here with us together. The reason Jesus Christ has never left us. He is always living together with us. His address is your address. My address is the address of Jesus Christ. Because Christ dwells in you. In your home. He is always staying together with you. So either you are living together with him. Or either you put him into sleep. That's your responsibility. So when you repent and wake Jesus Christ up, He is going to live together with you. And He is going to calm down every storm in your life. And Jesus Christ is same as today, as 2,000 years ago, in preparing a table in the wilderness. When Jesus Christ went out to the Bethsaida, with the disciples, all day long he taught them, healed them, and cast out devil, and evening came. And the people were very starved. And Jesus Christ could not see them go home starved. Many people were lying down on the grass. They were tired, they were hungry. And Jesus Christ called disciples to him. And uh, he called Philip, Philip, feed them. Philip was aghast. He said, Jesus, we are in the wilderness. We have no shop here at all. We have no place to buy the bread. And to make matters worse, we have no money. At least we should have a 300 denarii to feed them even a little bit, but we don't have a penny. And uh, Jesus, you see this crowd. There are 5,000 men. If we add women and children, there will be more than twenty to 30,000 people. How could we feed them? That is an impossible thing. Send them away. Let them find their own dwelling place and their own food. But Jesus Christ commanded to feed them. Here, Philip was a great doubter, unbeliever. But Andrew, when he listened to Jesus Christ, Andrew went out and he found five brothers and two fishes of the little boy. He brought that five fish and five bread and two fish to Jesus. All the people laughed at him. Other disciples, they laughed and said, Andrew, are you crazy? How can you try to feed this many people with five bread and two fish of baby boy? But Jesus Christ accepted the five breads and two fish, blessed them, multiplied them, and fed them all to the fullest of their stomach. And there were twelve baskets full of the leftover. Where Philip failed, Andrew succeeded. Where Philip could not feed, Andrew could feed. What's the difference? Philip only saw the wilderness. Philip only saw that they had no money. Philip only saw the big crowd. But Andrew saw Jesus Christ in the wilderness. Yes, they were in wilderness. But Jesus was in the wilderness. Yes, they had no money. But Jesus Christ was with them together. There was no place to buy the bread. But still Jesus was there. Jesus is the Son of God. He created the heaven and the earth. Nothing is impossible to Jesus Christ. They were same disciple. They were in same wilderness. They were in same difficulty. But you see the difference between Philip and Je Andrew. Philip had religion, but Andrew had Jesus Christ. Philip was uh, very logical minded, but Andrew had faith. Philip was negative, but Andrew was positive. Philip did not have the visions and dream, but Andrew dreamed of feeding all of those people. And Jesus Christ just ignored Philip. He sided with Andrew because 
angel recognized Jesus Christ because angel was positive, because angel had the visions and dream, because angel had the faith in Jesus. So together with the angel, Jesus Christ spread the table in the wilderness. Brothers and sisters, is your heart wilderness? Is your home wilderness? Is your business wilderness? Is your life wilderness? Do you say that our country is in wilderness? You don't need to worry about wilderness. Once you have Jesus, Jesus will turn the wilderness into the rich table. Tonight Jesus is here with us together. He is same yesterday, today and forever. He wants to change the wilderness into a feasting table. Tonight he wants to spread feasting table for you, for your home, for your country. Do never become the disciple of the Philip. Become the disciple of Andrew. Wherever you go, you will find the wilderness. While we live in the world, we will always find ourselves in the wilderness. But unbelievers, they only see the wilderness. But believers, we see Jesus in the wilderness. Bible says, Lo, I will be with you to the end of the world. To the end of the world. Whether we go to the sea or wilderness, Jesus will go together with us. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, regardless of your sense feeling, regardless of your experience, regardless of the accusation of Satan, when you keep on trusting Jesus, He is same yesterday, today, and forever. He is going to perform miracle for you. We were in wilderness in Korea. 1953, the Korean War ended. But our country was devastated. We were absolutely in wilderness, economically, socially, politically, and everything. And when I look at the wilderness, I lamented, who could come and help us? There would be no hope for our country. There would be no abundance anymore for us. We will live in this poverty-stricken country, and we will perish. At that time, I was non-Christian. I had no hope. I could only see the wilderness. And I could only see the vast people. And there was no hope. Then, in 1960, great revival came to Korea. People began to wake up to the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Millions of people began to turn from Buddhism to the Christianity. And they began to accept the living Jesus. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the Korean wilderness. He began to prepare the table for us. Economically, socially, politically, he brought abundance, victory, success, glory. And now Jesus Christ lifted us up and we have life, life more than abundantly. So far as we have Jesus in the wilderness, all things are possible. Nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. You will say, but I don't have faith. Brothers and sisters, when you accept Jesus, Jesus gives you a portion of faith to you. It is up to you whether you use faith or not. Faith is not feeling. Faith is gifted from the Lord. Whether you feel you or not, God has given you a base of faith when you accept Jesus Christ. And when you decide to believe, you can decide. You can decide to believe. You can decide not to believe. It's not emotional things. It is uh, you are emotional. It is not emotional faith. It's willpower. When you will to believe, you will believe. Amen. I pray that you will believe in Jesus Christ in your wilderness and claim the victory. And Jesus will perform miracle after miracle in your life. Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today and forever. He is just the same today as 2,000 years ago in changing the hopeless situation to the hopeful situation. 
Mary and Martha loved Jesus Christ. Their brother was uh, Lazarus. They were poor people. They were living in Bethany. Whenever Jesus Christ came to the Bethany, he stayed in their home. Jesus loved them. And while Jesus was far away in Judea, one day, their brother Lazarus came back home with a terrible sickness and disease. He lay down. He was suffering. And his sisters, Martha and Mary, brought the doctors and medicines and they tried to cure him. But nothing could save him. Finally, Lazarus died. So they took the Lazarus and entombed him. And they were waiting Jesus. But after four days, Jesus came. And Mary and Martha was in full of sorrow. They said to Jesus, Jesus, if you were here, our brother would not have died. You know, they believed in Jesus of yesterday, not Jesus of today. Jesus, he said, if you were four days ago here, our brother would not have died. But Jesus came to resurrect Lazarus right now. Jesus is no different from four days ago or even today. So Jesus said to the Martha and Mary, let's go to the tomb place. So they came beside the tomb place with many Jewish people. And Jesus said to the Martha, Martha, roll back the tombstone. And the, the decaying smell was thinking. Martha was crying and looking to Jesus. Jesus, my brother went into the tomb four days ago. He is decaying. As you see, the smell is terrible. And all the Jewish people said to the Martha, Martha, no, no way. You can't become fanatic. Don't roll back the stone. It's fanatic thing, terrible thing. So Martha was so troubled. Jesus, he is thinking. But Christ was very angry. He was trembling. He said to the Martha, Martha! I told you that if you would believe, you see the miracle of God. It is no matter of thinking or no thinking. It is a matter of faith. God is a creator. He can make the children of Abraham even out of the rock. So Jesus was looking to the eyes of Martha. Martha, roll back the rock. And... Martha and Mary was a great unbeliever a minute ago, but they changed their heart. See, faith is not emotional things. It is just the changing of your willpower. They willed not to believe, but now they changed and they willed to believe. And two of the sisters went to the rock. They pushed the rock. Rock was heavy stone. And they were two very weak ladies. And they even fasted for four days, cried. They did not sleep. They, were no, they had no strength. They struggled. The rock would not move. But nobody helped. Because Jewish people, they were laughing at them. Unbeliever would not help you. And Jesus himself would not help you. Because faith without action is death. Jesus wanted to see their faith. What you can do, Jesus will not help you. But what you cannot do, Jesus will perform miracle. Martha and Mary could remove the rock. So Jesus waiting till they finish what they could do. And they struggled and struggled. Many a times they fell back and they failed. But finally the rock began to move and they pushed the rock open. There's a big empty cave. Opened the wide mouth and stinking smell swarmed out. People were all putting hand on the nose. Then suddenly Jesus Christ came and stood before the Mary and Martha. He looked into the empty tomb and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And all the people were in great tension. They were watching and they were watching. They were watching. They were wondering. If Lazarus surely would alive and come out. Then suddenly they saw some shadow moving out of darkness. And then here Lazarus 
come forth. He came out. He came out. He became alive. Jesus Christ commanded and the death could not keep him. He was alive. He moved out. And the death changed into the resurrection. Sorrow changed into the great hilarious joy. Failure turned into the victory. Satan failed. Christ had victory. Here Lazarus came out. The other hopelessness turned into a tremendous hope. You say, oh, I'm hopeless. My physical condition is hopeless. My home is hopeless. My business is hopeless. My country is hopeless. Well, if you have Jesus, you should not say that. Because Jesus is specializing on the hopeless cases. Even nowadays, Jesus says, I tell you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Jesus is here to show you the glory of God. And only if you believe in Him, trust in Him, and exercise your faith, glory of God is going to shower down upon you. And here, Lazarus walked out, but he was all shrouded by the death cloth. He is alive, but he was still shrouded by the death cloth. But Jesus said, set him free and let him go. Many Christians, they accept Jesus Christ. They come out of the spiritual death. But still they are shrouded with death clothes. Death clothes of the sin. Death clothes of the worldly habit. Death clothes of sickness and disease. Death clothes of the curse. And Jesus Christ do not want you to be in the shroud of the death clothes. When you become Christian, Jesus won't set you free. Jesus has set him free from sin habit. Set him free from the worldliness. Set him free from the alcoholism. Set him free from the medicine. Set him free from the bad talking. Set him free from the sickness and disease. Set him free from the poverty. Set him free from the curse. Set him free from the death. Jesus wants to give you the freedom to do that. Jesus Christ died on the cross. And he took your sin and my sin, your unholiness and my unholiness, your disease and my disease, your curse and my curse, your death and my death, and he crucified them all on the cross. And he's destroyed the power of Satan. Power is, devil is stripped of this power and governance and kingdom on the cross. Jesus Christ completely destroyed power of Satan. And through Jesus, we have more than conqueror. You are more than victorious in Jesus Christ over the sin. You are more than conqueror over the devil. You are more than conqueror over the sickness and disease. You are more than conqueror over the curse and poverty and difficult situation. You are more than conqueror over your death and hell. Christ has redeemed us from all this power. Christ already declared the freedom to us. You are no more going to live in the tomb. You should walk out. You don't need to live in this, with a stinking smell. You are going to come out and you are going to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are going to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And you are going to be blessed by Jesus Christ. Bible says, the, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou shalt prosper and be in health as thy soul prospers. When you receive Jesus, Jesus Christ delivers us from the three great calamities. When Adam and Eve fell from the grace, the three calamities came to their lives. The spiritual death came to them and circumstantial curse came. Physical sickness and death came. They were confronted with the three calamities. And uh, they've tried to overcome these three calamities from generation to generation. But they could not have victory. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came 
and on the cross, he is destroyed these three calamities by his blood. He destroyed the sin and death. He, by his cross, Jesus Christ took away all the curse. Bible says, Jesus Christ was cursed on the cross so that we may be free from the curse. And Jesus Christ destroyed the sickness and disease. Instead of three calamities, Jesus Christ gave us a threefold blessings. And you are going to be blessed spiritually. You are going to be blessed in your circumstances. You are going to be blessed in your physical life. Jesus Christ is not religion, nor ritualism. He is uh, real. He is the Son of God. He is same yesterday, today, and forever. Tonight, Jesus Christ wants to transform your life. Because He is a transformer. When He comes, He can't help but transform you. When you have Jesus, your life is going to be transformed. God is going to release you from the power of the devil and translate you into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You are going to be transformed from the sin, from the devil, from the oneness to the child of God, to the kingdom of God. You are going to be changed when Jesus comes. You are going to be changed. And when Jesus Christ comes, he is going to give you peace, joy, righteousness, love. He is going to calm down all the cyclone in your heart. What kind of cyclone do you have? Christ is going to command the cyclone to come down. Jesus is alive. Jesus can never permit the cyclone to destroy you. You will have the peace, joy, and righteousness, happiness. And whatsoever wilderness you have, don't be afraid. Find Jesus in the wilderness. Jesus will never leave you and forsake you. He is always with us together. And when we only look at the wilderness and complain, then we will be slave to the wilderness. But despite the wilderness, despite the difficulty, when we look to Jesus, trust and pray Him, and ask Him to help us, then Jesus will change the wilderness into the feast table. Wonderful place. Jesus says, I come to you to give you life and life more than abundantly. There are no hopelessness in Jesus Christ. Unbelievers, they have hopelessness. But when we trust in Jesus, we have no hopelessness. Because Jesus Christ turned the hopelessness into the great victory. When God created the world, He created the world out of nothing. He can create a victory out of nothing to your life. Jesus Christ wants you to have freedom in your spirit, in your physical life, and in your social life. Christ wants to set you free. He is an emancipator. He wants to emancipate you from every kind of bondage. Satan comes to enslave you. But Jesus come here to free you. Are you enslaved to sin? Jesus is sensual. Are you enslaved in the habit? Jesus is sensual. Are you enslaved by the sickness? Tonight Jesus is the answer. Are you enslaved by the curse and poverty? Jesus is the answer. Are you enslaved by the fear of death and hell? Jesus is the answer. Christ! Jesus, come here to give you the answer, to solve your problem, to bless you, spirit, soul, and body. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He is reaching out His hand to you, all that labor and heavy laden, come to me. He says, come to me, despite of your sinfulness, despite of your wretchedness, despite of the, your filthiness. Jesus is inviting you. He's come to me. I will take care of you. I will give you the rest. Because Jesus Christ already paid the price for you on the cross. He already paid the price. You are very precious people to Jesus Christ. 
Because for you, Jesus died on the cross. For you, he was shipped on his back. For you, he shed his blood and he was torn in his flesh. And he paid the price. He paid the penalty. Now he is reaching out your hand. Just take hold of my hand. Believe in me. And I will take you. And I will take care of you. I will help you. I will bless you. What a wonderful Savior we had. While we have time, we must not neglect the invitation of Jesus Christ. Because he is coming very soon. And when he comes, he is going to take us back home to the eternal kingdom of God. Till that time, Christ is going to be with us in the Holy Spirit. And he is going to dwell with us. And I will tell you this one story and end my sermon. While I was pioneering my first church in 1958, one poor farmer's wife came to me. She said, Pastor, I have a lot of problems in my life. And I want to write a letter to Jesus Christ. Please tell me the address of Jesus Christ. So I was struck with a great consternation. I said, Sister, I don't know the address of Jesus Christ. She says, What? You are the servant of the Lord. And you don't know the address of Jesus Christ? She said, You must be false prophet. I said, No, I'm not false prophet. I'm disciple of Jesus, but I don't know the disciple, his address. But give me one week, then I'll find his address. Then she left. And I was praying to God, oh God, where are you? What is your address? Bible says you are in heaven. Where is heaven? The earth is round. The one who live on top, heaven is to that way. The one who is living in an in in end, the heaven is down there. Where is heaven? And I was traveling, I was praying. Day after day, I was asking God to show me the address of Jesus. And one day, I opened John chapter 14, and I was reading. And when I come to the 20th verse, suddenly the light began to shine upon me. Bible says, in that day, I will be my Father, you in me, and I will be in you. Oh, I jumped up and I shout. I said, I found the address of Jesus Christ. I said, Jesus Christ is in me and I'm in him. My address is the address of Jesus Christ. Next Sunday, the farmer's wife came to me. And I said, yes, I found the address of Jesus Christ. Open your notebook and ready to write down. And I said, you write down your address. So she wrote down her address. That is the address of Jesus Christ. She was very angry. She says, because I'm ignorant, you are cheating me that way. No, look at this Bible. Here the Bible says, at that day, I will be my Father, you in me, and I will be in you. Since Christ is in you, his address is your address. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is dwelling in you. His address is your address. He's not a million miles away. He's here with us together. You can reach out, touch him, hug him. You can breathe in him. Jesus is here. He is not 2,000 years ago. He is not a million miles away. He is same yesterday, today, and forever. He is with us right now, here. And he's going to do a great miracle for you this evening. Shall we bow down our head and pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus Christ, thy Son. Jesus Christ died for us 2,000 years ago. Jesus Christ paid all the price to purchase us. And we now want to trust in Jesus. We want to accept Jesus. And we want to receive the miracle of God. Oh, Heavenly Father, reach down and touch each and every one of us right now. Help us open our heart and receive Jesus as a Savior. For thy glory, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Keep bowing down your head, please. All those one who want to accept Jesus, this is the opportunity. Many of you have religion, but still you don't have the person Jesus Christ. Then you must accept person Jesus Christ. Nominal Christian is not Christian. Christianity is not a Christian. Jesus is the Christianity. When you have Jesus, you have the religion, salvation. Do you have person Jesus? Are you saved? Are you backslidden? If you want to be saved the first time in your life, 
And if you want to come back to the Lord after being backslidden, tonight is your opportunity. When you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, lift up your hand. I want to pray for you. Lift up your hand high. Yes, I see your hand all over the places. And I see your hand. God bless you. God bless you. All those ones who lift up your hand, stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Yes, all those who want to receive Jesus as your Savior tonight, stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. All over the places. Don't be afraid. Don't feel ashamed. Jesus Christ received all the shame for you on the cross. You don't need to be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Devil is trying to intimidate you. But don't be menaced by devil. Stand up. And all those who stood up, come forward. Right in front of me. I want to stand together with you and pray for you. All those one who stood up, come forward. Here, in front of my platform. Come. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. And stand right in front of the platform. I want to pray for you. All those who want to accept Jesus, come forward. Come forward to Jesus. Devil is defeated. Devil can't do anything for you anymore. Jesus loves you. And he is inviting you. So come forward. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep moving out. Keep moving out. Keep moving out. <laughs> The Holy Spirit is moving in your heart. So keep moving out. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, because God is seeing your living faith. Faith without action is dead. There is reason I ask you to move out to show you the sincerity of your faith. And the Bible says, when you trust in Jesus, you become righteous. And when you confess Jesus through your mouth, then you are going to be saved. So by moving out, you are showing the truthfulness of your faith. And you are going to be cleansed by the blood. Now you and I are together going to confess Jesus Christ as a Savior through our mouth. And so follow after my prayer with a loud voice, with sincerity. When I pray first, then repeat after my prayer with a loud voice. When we conclude our faith prayer, then Jesus is going to come into your heart. Heavenly Father, I come to you now. I confess that I am a sinner. Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for me. Jesus Christ resurrected for me. I accept this Jesus as my Savior. Jesus is my Savior right now. God is my Father. Jesus my Savior. Heaven is my home now. Devil is defeated in my life. Jesus is victorious in my life. Thank you for the salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. I'll pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all our dear brothers and sisters who made decision for Jesus Christ. Wash them clean. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Touch each and every one of them. And strengthen them with the grace of God. Keep them while they live on this earth. And when we all go to heaven, bring them to the kingdom of eternal God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You are saved. You are saved. Let's give a great hand can clap to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I want to pray for the divine healing. Jesus want to set you free from sickness and disease. Devil comes to give you the sickness. Christ comes to heal you. 
Jesus Christ is going to manifest His glory by healing you. So, Bible says these signs are going to follow them that believe that they shall lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. So lay your hand on your hurting place. Lay your hand on your hurting place. Wherever you are, put your hand on your hurting place. And I'll pray the prayer of faith. Just believe in miracle. Jesus is going to come to you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, reach out thy hand, touch each and every one of us, set us free from sickness and disease. You devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to live right now. You devil, go! 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, O oh, Heavenly Father, by the name of Jesus, reach out and touch and heal, perform miracle for everybody. Take away the sickness. Destroy the sickness. O oh, God, through the suffering place, heal every one of us right now. Heal! 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 And bless us right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you for the divine healing. I thank you for the divine miracle. Hallelujah. God is right now touching and healing many people from headache. Some of the people are healed from tooth pain. And you are healed from deafness. Someone is healed from the throat pain. And someone healed from stomach trouble. Your heart pain is gone. Arthritic pain is healed. Your backbone trouble is healed. Hemorrhoid is gone. Hallelujah. Someone was bleeding and God stopped the bleeding and you are healed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone had a skin disease and God healed. And someone came here limping, leaning on the cane and God touched and healed you. You are healed. Praise God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, God, let me. Oh, God, let me.